are delighted to be here on Arlington Day. Uh, we just presented uh, an early music piece from the Renaissance, from the Cancionero de, de Palacio, and um, we added the merengue rhythm. And uh, because the lyrics are so long, but the music itself is so short, we rearranged it changing the tempo and the tonality it was lower and lower. Basically, we were trying to put the child to sleep. We continue with a Venezuelan piece called El Curucha, and uh, is on the rhythm called Joropo. It's typical of Venezuela and Colombia, and uh, we will have the whole ensemble playing.
uh, continue our program with a Spanish piece that was written for the guitar. It's called Zarambeques or Muecas. Muecas means like grimaces. And uh, this is a very interesting piece because the accent is in three, but the accent goes on the second beat. We will play this, but yeah, exactly. That's like, uh, uh. and um, we rearrange it for our ensemble. And uh, after that, because we play this piece several times, uh, Eduardo got inspired and uh, Danilo got inspired to go into another Joropo style uh, called Seis Numerao, which is typical of Venezuela too. And uh, we will play Spanish piece, Seis Numerao piece, and then with that rhythm of Seis Numerao, we will play again the Spanish piece called Sarambeque, but now it has the Joropo feeling. So um, here we go.
um, at this point, we'd like to introduce uh, some of the members. We'll start here, uh, that, uh, Adriana. Hi, um, my name is Adriana. I'm from Cuba, and it is a pleasure for me to be with you today, singing this wonderful music together. Hi, my name is Danilo. I'm originally Italian. And it's only fitting that the largest guy plays the tiniest instrument. <laughs> uh, and I think you probably know this is a violin. But it's special and, violin. Yeah. <laughs> um, big pleasure to join Room Barocco for my first time. And uh, this is super fun music. Thank you, Danilo. Continue the introduction. For now, we'll play uh, one piece. It's called Que Dulcemente Canta. Que Canta is how sweetly it sings. It's on the rhythm of the hakara, and here we are not messing up with anything. We're just playing an early music piece with some percussion and the hakara style. And um, we um, the, we only had a melody, and we rearranged it and. We Put, um, solos for the violin, and uh, we added a little, a little touch, but we didn't uh, uh, arrange it like the other pieces. Instrumental, and 
all the low range. Laurie Gutierrez. I was born in Venezuela <coughs> and uh, the instrument I am playing is called the viola da gamba and you're welcome to come and see it after the concert. Uh, it's a seven string instrument played with a, a viol and it has frets like a guitar and it's also tuned in fourth like a guitar and uh, with a middle a third in the middle. And they these two are actually related. Okay, so uh, my name is Kirsten Lamb. I'm originally from New Jersey. Um, and I am playing the, the bass for you too, the double bass, upright bass, has a lot of different names. You can find it in all kinds of styles of music, from classical to jazz to folk to um, South American music to, uh, yeah, basically any, any music you can think of has a bass, <laughs> yeah, which um, is why. <laughs> My name is Eduardo Betancourt, I'm original from Venezuela, and I play, in this case, the harp, the Venezuelan harp, and Marcus. Yeah. Thanks for having us in this beautiful festival. Hello everyone, my name is Miguel, I am a percussionist from Lima, Peru, so I play mostly cajón and also all type of percussion. So you want to check, for example, we have like a Donkey Joe. I don't know if you ever have seen one before, but it's really original from South America. So if you want to take a look at any other instruments that are here, you are welcome to. So I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. But today we are um, welcoming not only Danilo and the ensemble, but we're also welcoming uh, Miguel. Miguel, as he says, is from Peru, and he has a special instrument today which he's going to play a solo uh, in this upcoming piece called Tonada El Congo. Uh, 
the Stonana de Congo comes from a source, uh, from a Peruvian source, uh, an early music, uh, 18th century piece, and we rearrange it for us, but because it's Peruvian, we added a, a rhythm called festejos, which is uh, the, what he's going to play at the very beginning of the piece, and through all the uh, uh, through all this piece called Tonada el Congo. And um, the interesting thing about this piece is that the singer, the lyrics are reminiscent about what it was to be uh, coming. He said that about having emigrated from, uh, horse immigrated from Africa to South America. And uh, that we uh, are presenting it uh, today to you as a symbol of resistance of how these uh, people, even though they suffer, they found a way to express themselves. And here we are to continue the, that expression of resilience. Here we go.
instrument is called cajita, and it really is an instrument that the, um, the uh, people in, um, in Peru um, play usually in traditional music. They come in different sizes, and um, you're welcome. The kids are welcome to come and check it out. Um, it really is just a cajita, a, a box, and they make um, the complex riddle with one hand and the little stick. I will tell you, it's not easy to play. <laughs> it may look easy, but it's not. Um, is there any other place besides Peru that they play cajita? Uh, Mexico? I, I'm not quite sure, but it's like mostly it's from Peru actually the instrument. So yeah, it's yeah, particularly it's from Peru. We have not seen it in, in other uh, countries yet so far. Well, everything has an end, and uh, unfortunately, we are uh, on our last piece. But we would like to invite you over there. Uh, we have a, a, a flyer for our next concert, which is called Fandango. And uh, we'll play, this last piece we'll play in the next concert, I'll, along with a lot of other pieces uh, related to the fandango. Um, this particular one is called Fandango Jarocho because it comes from uh, Mexico. And uh, in this, uh, our star here, uh, Miguel, will be playing the donkey uh, you want to show them how it sounds? <laughs> if you could, Miguel. So, this is, uh, we didn't kill anyone, nobody <laughs> suffered for us to create this instrument, we assure you that once they are dead, the instrument, for any other natural reason, people uh, grab this and they put it in, um, in uh, boiling water and it has a long process to uh, disinfect it and create this instrument. So the, the teeth rattle and that's what it causes that that sound, and but also uh, with the little uh, stick, you produce one sound, and when you hit it, the teeth created that other sound. You are, again, you're welcome to come and check it out. This is particularly played in Venezuela. We don't don't play that much at all, but Mexico and Peru play it all the time. Yeah. And this one next piece, Fandango Jarocho, is from Mexico, and um, we, uh, we are uh, now going to the term of Fandango as a place where people gather to party, to just have a, a, a good time. So Fandango in this case means a gathering, to have fun, gentle fun.
Can you tell me your names and about your organization? I'm Christine Noah. I'm one of the co-chairs of the Arlington Commission for Arts and Culture. And I'm Stuart Ikeda. I'm the other co-chair. And, and, and we're the Town Umbrella Commission for all the art, arts organizations in town. So we have artist grants for the Grants Committee. Um, we also operate the Cultural District. We uh, sponsor public art projects all throughout town, murals, utility boxes, uh, climate futures, the youth banners. Um, these are some of our projects uh, you've probably seen around town. Uh, we also sponsor the Poet Laureates um, in town and um, just generally support public art projects and artists in town, um, try to provide opportunities for them and just make them aware of resources that are available um, to try and support the arts ecology in, in Arlington. We also publish the artsarlington.org website, a newsletter and Facebook pages. Um, this is a free resource where artists can find resources on grant opportunities, studios, performance, uh, exhibition opportunities, but also for visitors to the town to find a comprehensive town-wide calendar of cultural events happening all through town. There's also an interactive map of the cultural district with a self-guided audio tour. It's just full of uh, great free resources, so um, sign up for artsarlington.org and you know, learn about all the great, thriving cultural activity in our town. Amazing, thank you. Um, could you tell me a bit about the history of this program? History. The history of, of the commission? So, uh, yeah, the Commission for Arts and Culture was uh, created as part of a master planning process uh, that the town undertook, and then that led to the creation of an arts and culture master plan. Um, we're just sort of coming to the end of that, but this version of the commission was formally approved by town meeting, I want to say 2018, 
uh, or 2017 or 18, um, and we're a 13-member commission, so we represent what had formerly been uh, separate town entities, so there was Arlington Public Art, uh, there was the Arlington Cultural Council, there was the Cultural District, so we're, like I said, an umbrella commission. Um, it's been now in operation for about five years in this version. Yeah. Awesome. And um, to finish off, what do you like about Arlington Town Day? <laughs> I love Arlington Town Day. I mean, you can just see it's pouring down rain outside and people are out here so excited to be here and be learning and engaging with um, all of the different organizations and opportunities in town. So I think the way it just brings people together is really exciting. And I'll just uh, point out, we've got one other uh, activity going on during this town day. If you're coming out, we have plain air painting out in the Robbins Memorial Garden. There are artists who are out there painting in real time, you know, beautiful landscapes of the garden. And at the end of the day, we're going to vote for the, uh, the People's Choice Award. And we, we're giving some prizes to the artists. So everyone should stop by there, too. Okay, thank you so much. Have a great town day. My name is Hong Yi Ji. I'm reporting for ACMI News at Arlington Town Day, and I'm here with Kim and her brand, and she's going to tell, tell us everything about her brand. So, first question, what inspired you to, to, to start this? So I'm a pastor at High Rock Church, and you know we, our church is in Arlington, and so we feel like we want to be good neighbors. Um, we just want to do things that neighbors can participate in and um, help in any way we can. And we have a long history here in Arlington. So each year we give away something just to be nice. So today we're giving away um, free juice pops. And now that it's a rainy day, like, oh, why do you want frozen juice? But some aren't frozen. Um, so we're just trying to, you know, be friendly. We also have a fall festival that's coming up on October 20th that anybody in town can come to, bring their kids. They can dress up, get free food. It's just, yeah, trying to be nice. Okay, that's nice. Mm -hmm. um, how long have you been participating in Town Day? Oh gosh, many, many years. I've been at High Rock uh, at least nine years and it was going on before that, so it's a long time. What keeps you coming back? I think. I personally love being part of the community. I love walking down the street and meeting the other neighbors that are part of Arlington. Um, it just being friendly. Uh, so that's why I'm here. That's nice. Um, is there like a way that we could contact you and is there a way that people could find you? Yeah. So we actually, our church is right around the corner. So this is our old building we still own, the uh, big white building. But we're just right around the corner on Mill Street. and. Um, my name is Kim, so Kim R at highrock.org if anybody wanted to know what we do or why we do what we do. So, thank you. Can you briefly introduce why, we do, why you do it or like what, what, you, what you do? So, um, so because I'm a pastor, um, we're really about talking about God. That, that's what a church does. And so, but you don't have to believe in God to come to our cafe or to come to our fall fest. It's just trying to, you know, be a good neighbor. Thank you. Thank you for taking the interview. Oh. My pleasure. <laughs> Hi, this is Doug from ACMI, and we're here with uh, Robbins Library Director Anna Litton, and we're going to talk a little bit about the Robbins and uh, what you're doing here at Town Day. What can people expect when they come here today for uh, the Robbins Library? Uh, we love to use our opportunity at Town Day to connect with community members and learn a little bit more from our community members about what they would like from the library. So today we are offering two engagement boards. We would love to hear from community members about what types of programs they would like to see at the library and we'd love to know more about how people find out about library events. We have a couple different engagement opportunities. Of course we have our fantastic button maker. You want a Robbins Library button? They are available today and the library is open today. Um, of course citizens are more than welcome to come in and use any of our library resources and the annual Friends of Robbins uh, Town Day book sale is going on. It's rainy but they're all downstairs in the community room. Books for quite the bargain. That's wonderful. You know, um, I was thinking I would ask you a little bit about how libraries have changed over the years and there's so much more than books mm -hmm. and checking out books. Uh, you know, I 
check out the hotspot sometimes yeah. from the library of things, look through that. Can you talk a little bit about the library as kind of a community resource? Yeah, absolutely. So I do want to say, when people say libraries are so much more than books, that is absolutely true, but circulating materials is still our core mission. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just that some of those materials that we circulate have changed a bit. So as you mentioned, you want to check out a hotspot, great, come to the library. Uh, right now, we circulate, last year in FY24, we circulated over about 218,000 digital items. So those are downloadable ebooks and audiobooks. You never need to come into the library to access those items. You can, of course, access things from the library, traditional materials like newspapers. You can get those online as well. So uh, materials are still our core mission. But of course, people come to the library for so many different things. They come for kids programs. They come for community groups for adults. They come for one of my favorite activities is our monthly cookbook group. Everyone makes a recipe from the same cookbook. You're essentially having a community dinner with your neighbors. It's based around a book. We offer to opportunities for our community to connect, connect with ideas, connect with each other, and connect with the vibrant life in Arlington. Wonderful. One other thing I was going to mention is um, I know a lot of folks who go to the library to apply for jobs, mm -hmm. you know, to kind of yep. get their life moving in a different yep. way there. Is that yep. something that you see a lot at the library? Oh, of course. I mean, you know, people are researching employment opportunities, school opportunities. People are researching uh, maybe companies that they'll need to contract with in order to make their current uh maybe their small business, move it forward a little bit. Anything you want to get, you can get at the library. As I like to say, that library card is the most powerful card in your wallet. And one last thing, since I'm from the east side, I just want to um, have you talk a little bit about the Fox Library. My absolute favorite location right now, the Fox Branch Library in East Arlington. So many people might know that uh, the town applied for Massachusetts Public Library Construction Program grants in May of 2024 in an effort to rebuild the Fox Branch Library and create the vibrant community space that Arlingtonians should expect at the uh, in the east here as well. And uh, we're still waiting to see whether or not we receive those grant funds, but it was such an exciting opportunity to really hear from people what they want at the East Branch Library. And we've identified three major priorities for any construction project there. We need a building that is fully accessible. Every single community member can get in. Currently, the, in order to enter the Fox Branch Library, you need to be able to uh, enter a step of seven and a quarter inches. It's terrible. Um, so we really want to create that accessible space. We want to create vibrant children's spaces. Um, it's such a heavily used location for kids and families, and we really need to make sure that the children's spaces meet community needs and community interests. Fun, great spaces for little kids. We also need adult workspaces that really work. Currently, there are you cannot close a door at the Fox Branch Library, and it's a noisy location. Uh, there are a lot of people who need access to adult workspace for a lot of different reasons, and we want to be able to provide it there. Top three priorities at the Fox Branch Library for us right now. Wonderful. And then finally, uh, how can people, you know, they can come out to Town Day, they can go to the Friends Sale. How can people support the Robbins Library, the Fox Library in town? How yeah. can they do it? The first way everybody can support the libraries is to be a library user. Attend a program, check out a library item, just come visit and hang out in our beautiful locations. Uh, after that, of course, we hope that people do purchase a book from the Town Day book sale, from the ongoing book sale up on our fourth floor. We also hope that community members take an opportunity to donate to the Arlington Libraries Foundation. Uh, our library is generally supported by municipal funds, but we also do rely on private fundraising to support the everyday operations that people need and expect. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And, you know, everyone, come see the Robbins Library booths down here at Town Day. Come to the library. Support our community treasure. Thanks so much. Thank you. All right. We are here in the lobby of Town Hall and Town Day. We're having a great time. The rain is coming down, teeming, but nobody cares. We have a jam-packed auditorium, thousands of people walking down Mass Ave, up and down. They don't care. They just want to have fun. Now, I used to work in Boston years ago at Channel 56, and this is one of my old coworkers. I have known him for 30 years. His name is Tim Estilos, and he's one of the most interesting men in America oh. and beyond the borders. Oh, Tim, welcome. I don't know about that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. This is a lot of fun. Oh, it's a great time. Everybody is here, and everybody's having a good time. Yeah, because I came in from Waltham. I was thinking that the rain was going to come down to be a washout. Yeah. This is so cool. I was checking out all the displays out there, all the people. There was one little wet dog that looked like he needed, you know, to dry off a he little bit. He wanted to go home. He'd he had enough. To go home. Yeah. But this is this is really a lot of fun. Well, Tim does. Tim was a reporter uh, when I was anchoring at Channel 56 years ago in Morrissey Boulevard. He is still interviewing people who are 
you have to rattle off who you talk to. Don Johnson from Miami Vice. Uh, 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 who else? Robert Downey Ta Jr. Uh, Robert Downey Meryl Streep. Uh, Meryl Streep. Uh, uh, Keep going. Yes, let's see, who else there? Uh, Jeff oh, Barn. Jeff Barn. I interviewed yeah. Jeff Barn and uh, 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 Anne Hathaway, and there's so many that I can't think of them, and, I, and the cat got my tongue a little bit, but, yeah, but it's just a lot of people. He gets to go out to Hollywood and talk to the big wigs, and he comes back and says, oh, you know, we talked to this person. <laughs> we, I talked to Jimmy Stewart. Wait. Who did you interview today? Jeff, you know, next so. Week. Next week. Angelina Jolie. Angelina Jolie my, next week. My dreams have come true. <laughs> and I'm going to be somewhere in the Terminal E at Logan. Okay, that's that's the story of my life. Okay, listen to him. You'll be on a beach somewhere, kicking back, you know, drinking whatever they do in in Brazil, lovely Brazil. Probably, you're right. Yeah. You're right. Hey, good to see you, Tim. It's good seeing you. Thanks too. so much, and you're going to hang out for the rest of the uh, town day. Just the last word. From somebody who's out of town, this Arlington, what, town days? Yeah. It's amazing. I mean, it's my first time here. I'll be coming back again. I saw a, a, a soapbox derby booth. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to come back for that. So yeah. Arlington, you are rocking. There this you was go. fun. Tim, thank you so much for your time. Tim, as you could tell, is an introvert, but we'll try to get it out <laughs> of him sooner or later. Thanks for joining us. More to come off on town day. Stay with us. ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help.